Hello, this is Tomoyasu Seisuke, President of the Justice and Journalism Cohort. In this video, we would like to report two things that many gifties have shown a lot of concerns about our prestigious school, and they are the reason behind cohort elitism and the truth about the Royal Court Club. We won't make this video long so you can get the most essential information as fast as possible. As you all know, cohort elitism runs rampant in their school, and it has been festering into a big problem as time goes by. High class gifties frequently bullying low class gifties in various ways, berating, belittling, insulting, and even resorting to physical violence. Many cohort presidents and students alike have been expelled or quitting themselves. A few even disappeared for unknown reasons. The food and drinks cohort even went on strikes for three days demanding better treatment. And this has culminated into the tragic passing of a gifty named Bamma Konami, who deserves better. On February 7th, 2056, 10.15 p.m., the ultimate pastry chef, Bamma Konami, was found dead with a bullet wound on her forehead while she was doing her usual live streams for her fans. The only thing that can be found in the crime scene was a pistol. Many people who were watching the live stream saw the bullet wound appearing on her forehead. She was never seen holding the pistol at all. This is the textbook definition of a perfect murder. Nobody knows who shot her and how the killer shot her to this day. Rest in peace, Konami. However, after gathering testimonies for the past three years, we have found the source behind cohort elitism. Contrary to popular belief, it is not just a coercive tactic to control others. There are other three ways for you to be immune to cohort elitism. First, be a B-list or A-list celebrity. Everyone will love you if you're rich, famous, and beautiful, right? Second, pay for the ridiculous tuition of $84,550. We can come to this school for free if you are scouted like all of us did at the beginning. And lastly, join the Royal Court Club. The Royal Court Club was a secret elite club created by Randy Royston, aka The Joker, to gather up the richest, most powerful gifties who shows interest in both playing cards as well as selling and acquiring a certain object that members claim to unleash your full potential. We'll get to this object later in the report. To join the club, a club member has to approach you, ask you to sign a non-disclosure agreement before they can tell you what club is about. This is to use legal repercussions to prevent you from leaking any information about the club. And finally, you have the chance to accept or refuse the invitation. Joining after you change your mind is also acceptable. The club meetings always starts every Tuesday and Saturday at 9 p.m., so make sure you get plenty of sleep beforehand. If you're a newcomer, you have to go through the initiation ritual to prove your absolute loyalty to the club. It involves every member to gently cut their fingers put one drop of their blood into the chalice of milk, and everyone takes a single sip afterward. <laughs> I know, very nasty. And with that, congratulations. You are now an official member of the Royal Court Club. You're not allowed to refer to anyone, including yourself, as your real name, but a code name based on cards in a poker's royal flush of a suit. 10, Jack, Queen, King, an ace. These are the current club members that we know of. Randy Royston, the Joker. Kanekubo Kingoro, the King of Diamonds. Irenise Gifford, the Queen of Diamonds. Lurikawa Mangyoku, the Ace of Diamonds. Vespera Muvale, the Queen of Spades. Stephen Banbury, the Jack of Spades. Yakumo Oboro, the Ace of Clubs, Merrick Barrister, the King of Clubs, Vendeline Kirschlinger, the Queen of Hearts. 
Now, about the certain object we mentioned, this is an Argantium, or Teardrop of Heaven as the Fongri people call it. One of the club's main activities is smuggling Argantium through auctions, as well as keeping some to themselves. And what is it for, you ask? Well, this is no ordinary crystal. It grants anyone, and I mean anyone, that wears it as accessories or implanted inside their body supernatural powers. Everyone will receive different powers based on their personalities. We will not go through which kind of powers the members have because we do not have any evidence backing this up. This is the main reason beyond the existence of the mystery cohort to study people with these powers granted by Argantiums. And lastly, why does the Joker need to gather up all these people? In order to explain, we need to mention that the Joker's reason behind the nasty initiation ritual, the non-disclosure agreement, the relentless recruitment of newcomers, all of these cult-like activities is their way to cause disgust and suspicion to everyone, thus bringing you to this report to expose the truth. We would like to also disclaim that Vendeline Kirschlinger, Merrick Barrister, did not join for the card games, the Argantiums, and the auctions. Vendeline was personally invited by the Joker to protect her from the brutality of cohort elitism as she is from a low-class cohort. As for Merrick, he was brought back after being expelled for the hidden rule for cohort precedence of not preventing Bama Konami's death, but not for free, of course. He had to pay that massive tuition. That is the end of our report. I hope the justice and journalism cohort had shed enough light onto the problems within our school. And with this video, we hope to change gifting for the better. Thank you so much for watching.